This film is a visual aid to the installation manual. Therefore, it does not contain all information needed for a precise installation. Read the manual thoroughly before you begin the mounting. We are now going to demonstrate the installation of a side power bow thruster. The parts you need to complete the installation are an electric motor, a control cable, a propeller and gear house with a motor bracket, an oil container with hose and mounting, the installation manual, a tunnel, a control panel, a fuse with holder, a main switch, electrical cables, and either fiberglass, epoxy, or polyester. You will also need some tools. Remember to always use safety glasses and gloves when casting and grinding. We start by finding the bolt's waterline. It is very important for the thruster's effectivity that the tunnel is placed as far forward as possible. Do not place the tunnel too close to the waterline, as this could result in reduced effect from air being sucked down into the tunnel. Because of this, you should try to place the tunnel as deep as possible. In the installation manual, you will find all the information you need to find the right tunnel position on your boat. When you have found the desired tunnel position on the outside of the hull, it is a good idea to check that the tunnel will fit the inside of the boat in relation to bulkheads and other obstacles. It can be difficult to find the interior tunnel position in comparison to the outside, so it is a good idea to use tangible or easy recognizable measuring points that can be seen both on the inside and the outside of the boat, such as the hull or windows as guidelines. Make sure to always use a level and be very precise when you are making measurements. When the right tunnel position has been identified, we are ready to drill our first hole at the tunnel's center point. The hole should be as small as possible and should indicate whether our measurements are 100% correct, both on the inside and outside of the hull. We recommend using Side Power's specially developed tool to cut the hole for the tunnel to ensure a precise fit. You can rent this tool inexpensively from your local Side Power dealer. Included with the tool is a steel bar that acts as a guide while you cut the hole. It should be inserted through the two 12mm center point holes in the bow. Adjust the milling bit in accordance with the enclosed table as the tool is constructed to fit several different tunnel diameters and material thicknesses. When cutting through the plaster, be patient. A cut performed in several layers will ensure the best result. It is important to leave two small points uncut to stabilize the steel bar when cutting the other side. Later, we will remove these two uncut points with the jigsaw. Before casting the tunnel to the hull, grind off the gel coat and polyester so that the fiberglass is exposed both on the inside and outside of the hull. It's now time to check the fit of the tunnel in the newly cut holes. Before we start cutting the tunnel to the desired length, there are a few factors we need to consider. A conventional installation will provide a drag on the back face of the tunnel, as this becomes a flat area facing the water flow, which can cause a lot of noise and splashing. This is not a good solution for sailboats or fast motorboats. We have two good alternatives that will reduce this problem considerably. One solution is to make a recess in the hull at the back of the tunnel. Therefore, back face and most of the drag is removed. The other solution is to make a deflector or spoiler in front of the tunnel. This is the most practical for retrofitting boats. This will push the water flow out from the hull and bypass the back face of the tunnel. As a general rule, you should not see the back face of the tunnel when standing directly in front of the tunnel at the angle of the boat's centerline. In our case, we have chosen to make a spoiler to reduce the back drag. 
Therefore, we will cut the tunnel, leaving a part of the tunnel sticking out in the lower forward area of the hole, and we'll use this as a support to mold a soft curve spoiler shape. Cut the tunnel according to the markings. Lightly sand the tunnel before casting to remove possible irregularity. Make sure to clean any areas where you are going to apply fiberglass with acetone before casting. Side power can offer a package for the casting of the tunnel. This is an epoxy based mixture from NM Epoxy. This is very strong and easy to work with. This mixture is ideal as it does not emit any smell or dangerous gases. The package includes epoxy and sheets of fiberglass. The installation is performed in two different phases. The package has divided the materials into appropriate quantities. Make sure to use these only one portion at a time. The relationship between base and hardener gives you enough time to work with the epoxy. Spread a good layer of the mixture around the tunnel openings on both sides. Use a roller to even out and spread the mixture as evenly as possible. Then lay the included fiberglass sheets around the tunnel on the inside of the boat. Make sure the sheets are thoroughly soaked with epoxy. If needed, a brush can be used for this purpose. The epoxy mixture is easy to work with when creating the spoiler. Make sure to mix the epoxy properly to minimize sanding and finishing later. If there is any epoxy left, roll it evenly on the fiberglass sheets around the tunnel. While the epoxy is drying, we will start fitting the gear house and motor bracket on the tunnel. If there is any epoxy from the casting process where the motor bracket is to be positioned, make sure to sand this away. The motor bracket must lie evenly on the tunnel surface. To be able to place the gearhouse correctly, you need to find the boat's center line. This is important because there is limited clearance between the propeller and tunnel wall. Included in the tool set from Side Power, you will find a guide. Use the guide to mark the holes that will be drilled for the gearhouse. Before you make these marks, make sure that the height of the bulkhead where the motor is mounted is high enough. In our case, we must mount the electric motor in a forward position to have enough clearance. If the angle surpasses 30 degrees, a supporting bracket must be made for the motor to rest on. When the right position has been identified, use a punch to mark the hole positions to avoid slippage while drilling. Correct cable size is very important for the effectivity of the thruster because it is the actual voltage at the motor that decides the output RPM of the motor and therefore the actual thrust. The table in the installation manual gives the minimum cable dimensions but larger cables can also be used. Remember that the given cable lengths are the sum of both the positive and negative cables from the battery to the thruster. Make sure to read the chapter on the electrical installation thoroughly, as a faulty installation could possibly cause fire or damage to the electrical system. An anti-friction spray or similar will make the laying of the electric cables easier. We are also at this time laying the cable for the control panel. If there are not any pipes to pull the cables through, Make sure that the cables are fastened with appropriate fasteners at even distances and that they are not chaffing against any sharp edges.
Sharp edges on the tunnel ends will generate noise and reduce the effectivity significantly. An optimal installation has a rounded edge on the tunnel ends that corresponds to 10% of the tunnel's radius. Once the epoxy used to make the spoiler has hardened, start to round off the edges of the tunnel. Make sure that the rounding is as even as possible. Now start the external casting of the tunnel. First, spread a layer of epoxy around the tunnel opening. Lay on the sheets of fiberglass, making sure that they are thoroughly soaked with epoxy. A brush is a handy tool for this job. Take your time, ensuring that the sheets are laid down evenly around the tunnel opening. Now, you are ready for the second internal layer of fiberglass. It is important to sand away irregularities before laying the last layer of fiberglass sheets. As before, it is important to soak the sheets properly and make sure that they lay evenly around the tunnel. This is how the inside of the boat should look like after the final casting. You can now fit the gear house in the tunnel using included gaskets. Mount the propeller and check that it is centered in the tunnel. Fill the gear house with gear oil type EP90. Make sure that the copper gaskets under the drain screw is put back in place. You can ensure extra safety against water seepage by using Secoflex or similar on both sides of the gasket. Use as little sealing compound as possible and make sure that you do not obstruct the holes for the oil. Be sure to apply oil or some other grease on the O-rings in the motor bracket before the gearhouse is mounted to prevent damage to the O-rings during mounting. Place the gearhouse through the main hole of the tunnel and carefully press the bracket and gearhouse together. Use the enclosed template to measure that the drive shaft has come through the motor bracket at the correct height. When it is time to install the electric motor, make sure that the share pin fits the share pin track. The electric motor can sit with the relay in all four directions on the motor bracket, depending on the best fit for your boat. Use the included bolts to mount the motor. Check the system by turning the propeller. Because of the gear reduction and the motor, you might find this difficult but it should be possible to turn the propeller by hand. When hooking up electrical cables, it is important to secure and hold the inner nut while tightening. If you fail to do so, you are at risk of loosening the point of connection. Remember to mount a correctly sized fuse and the main switch close to the battery. The control cable is easily connected to the corresponding contact from the electrical motor's relay. The opposite end should be connected to the corresponding contact at the control panel. When the external casting is dry, lightly sand around the entire tunnel opening to ensure a good surface on which to apply the gel coat. You do not need to prime the area as the epoxy itself is waterproof. After you have polished the gel coat, simply apply the anti-fouling. Check that the drive pin is in the center of the propeller axle. Slide the propeller on, followed by the washer and lock nut, and tighten. Finish by mounting the sinker node using Loctite or similar on the nut. It is important to remember to change the sinking node once a year. Now the installation is almost completed. 
the oil container must be installed above the water line. This ensures good lubrication and extends the life of the gear house. Fill the oil container with gear type oil EP90. Now it's time to install the control panel. It is important to find a good position on the dashboard so that it is easy to use the bow thruster. Keep in mind that it may be necessary to use the bow thruster together with throttle and gear. So it may be a good idea to place the control panel on the opposite side of the steering wheel. When you are cutting the hole using the included template, we recommend that you use tape we are going to be cutting to prevent splintering and uneven edges. Mount the control panel as instructed in the installation manual. You can choose to use the rear installation kit which gives the nicest appearance without any visible screws or the panel can be installed with a frontal frame. Remember to use the included gasket to prevent water seepage around the control panel. Activate the panel by pushing both of the on buttons at the same time. And if you should forget to turn it off, the system will automatically shut itself off five minutes after the last usage. As mentioned earlier, you need to install both a fuse and an electric main switch between the battery and the thruster. This should be mounted as close to the battery as possible. But remember that the main switch should be easily accessible as this needs to be shut off together with the other main switches when you leave the boat. Remember that in order to avoid unwanted voltage drops and heat generation, it is important to use a correctly sized cable grip to attach the cable eye to the thick electrical cables. Finally, we'd like to take the opportunity to wish you luck on your installation, and we hope that you have many nice days on the water with your side power bow thruster.